I've been having some trouble with the exhaust on my Frontier. So today, I'm installing the absolute cheapest set of cats and a kept back exhaust on this Frontier. So my Frontier back here has been having some exhaust problems. It uh, it keeps blowing the gaskets in between the uh, primary and secondary cats and where it goes from the secondary cats to the cat back. And and I crawled up under there and it's also got exhaust rattles because there's stuff bouncing around in, the, the, uh, in some of the pipes. And I've come to the conclusion that the cats come apart, the factory cats or whatever has been on this truck, this truck's got a lot of miles on it. And they have plugged the muffler because I can reseal all those uh, parts where the exhaust goes together and then I can go it's okay riding around town but uh, as soon as I get out on the highway and I run 75 mile an hour for you know an hour and a half it blows all that out I'm thinking it's getting too much back pressure so I'm gonna replace everything from the manifold back I'm gonna start out by doing some unboxing of this stuff the cat back came from Amazon and the Cadillac converters all four of them come from eBay I'm gonna tear it apart See what kind of adventures I get into with that. It's got some rust on it, so I'm sure that's going to be fun. And then I'll install everything, and we'll see how it sounds. What do you think? All right, let's get to unboxing. These Cadillac converters came from eBay with shipping. They were 200 bucks for all four of them. Uh, I'll give you one guess of uh, where they were manufactured. It comes from China. Now it's a primary cat. I don't know what side that goes to, I'll figure that out later. Another primary cat. I think that's the driver's side. No, that's passenger side. Got a bag of, of bolts and gaskets and stuff. It looks like it's got holes in it, so I hope everything's going there. And we have secondary cats for both sides. This is a cat bag that came from Amazon, and the pictures look like a, was it, an MBRP or MRBP, whichever, that's, that's a brand name, it's also, it looks like a that, whatever that brand name is, clone, from the pictures, so we shall see, when I get this box open, what all comes in here and what it's going to look like. We got pieces. Ooh, look at this, guys. Got a nice chrome tip. Look at that. Well, I'm big time now. And we got all pieces. Bruh. Uh, this kit has two and a half. It's supposed to have two and a half inch in and three inch after the uh, muffler. Be beautiful. Pretty. Look at that boy, boy right there. Oh, it's a straight through muffler. This thing's gonna be noisy. Got some bag of clamps and some more gaskets. So it looks like I might have some leftover gaskets. I do like these style clamps. Yeah, this is the tailpipe. That's definitely three inches. That's a honking pipe right there. It should breathe good now. Looks like it's all there. That's it. It's cleaned up and we'll get to ripping off the old exhaust. Alright, now that you got a good look at what I'm going to be installing today, let's get with it. Let's start tearing the old ones off. Alright, first thing I did is I got it up on jack stands just for extra clearance. You probably don't need to put it on jack stands if you've got a lift kit. I just did that to give me a little extra room to work and to put this camera up in here so you guys can see. And I yanked the front tires off. 
you're going to want to start by removing your all your oxygen sensors. So you've got one there, and the plug is, I don't know if you can see it, the plug is right here. This is on the pasture side. I'm going to go ahead and try to get it off. Sometimes these can be a pain in the butt. The driver's side one's on the top, and the connector is right there. I gotta cut now. I might put a zip tie on that. That's loose. Then you wanna come to the passenger side or the driver's side underneath. And I have a spacer on that one. I will talk about that later. But the connection is right there. And then we got one that is right. It's the one for the passenger side in the back. O2 sensor. It's right here. There we go. And you got to get it off that bracket. Because you see that bracket right there. You want these oxygen sensors all there it is. You want these oxygen sensors all the way loose and hanging like that. Alrighty, the next step is to get you some PB blaster or some cryo. Let's start wetting them. Them bolts. Let's see what we got here. Try to make this come apart as easy as possible. All right, now that we got all that stuff loose, we got that stuff sprayed down. While those bolts are soaking, I'm gonna break out my old friend, the Sawzall. Any OG people to subscribe to this channel and seen when I had that Pathfinder, you know I love the old Diablo blades. I'm about to put them to good use right now. here we got this one going that way we got a bracket going get in there we got a bracket going forward so those kind of point at one another and you got this one tailpipe here in the back and it's facing backwards so I think I'm gonna do is take the bolts out of that muffler support take the bolts out of that then I should be able to push everything forward and that whole exhaust system will come out. When you get that thing unbolted, you see it nice and loose now. And I should be able to shove this thing forward and it should come right off. Alright, now that we got all that stuff loose, we should be able to take a pry bar stick it up here on this cross member. Ease it forward. Oh, so, yes, maybe. I think it's hitting in the back back there. We're real close. All right, I took that back um, hanger, that rubber insulator all the way off because it was interfering here. So now I should be able to just pull this thing forward. And it Let's get the pry bar back on so I don't strain my guts out. Come on, baby. What you hanging on there? There it is. Beautiful. Are you hearing that? My suspicions were correct. That piece is a catalytic converter. Well, there you go. Smoking gun. Suspicions confirmed. That muffler was full of converter guts, and I'm sure it was causing a lot of back pressure. So I just sprayed them bolts again while they're still soaking. Let's take a minute to talk about these oxygen sensor spacers. Oxygen sensor spacers are used in a pinch if you have a bad converter or one that's self-cleared like this one or if you have one that you helped clear. Either way, 
you can put those on the rear O2 sensors and it will make a PO420 go away. I installed them just trying to get by in the meantime. But now that I have legit cater, well, as legit as Chinese ones will be, is now that I have catalytic converters that I'm getting ready to put back on it, I'm not gonna reinstall those O2 sensor spacers. I'm gonna throw them in the toolbox because I might need them some other time. How they work is pretty much the front O2 sensor gets a reading and it compares to the back O2 sensor and it compares them to the ECM. This is on all um, OBD2 cars. It compares them to readings and if they are reading the same, then it will set a PO420 code for your catalytic converter. Now this O2 sensor spacer right here, all it does is as the exhaust comes by, it isolates it out of the mainstream so it doesn't get as much of a shot of exhaust, but it gets a little bit. And what that does is fools the computer into thinking that there's still a catalytic converter on it. I am by no way recommending to gut your converter. I'm just saying, in a pinch, they do work. Okay, now for the hard part. Hopefully them bolts will come loose. I've been soaking the crap out of them all this afternoon in PB Blaster. It appears I'm gonna have to take the oxygen sensors out before I remove the cats, all the way out. Because you see that stud right there is right in the way of where I would run my extension in my swivel socket to get to that bolt. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and remove this guy. All right, I got me a 14 millimeter deep swivel socket. I have air tools, so I'm gonna use these air tools to speed up this process. You can do this with hand tools, but it's uh, I feel for you because it's gonna be a pain in the butt. Let's see if it'll come out. Okay, things just got really interesting. This is the adventure part of this uh, thing. You see that bolt right there? That one is a nut with a stud. These two are bolted from the backside, and as you can see, that heat shield's in the way. And then I get up here looking. That heat shield's loose as a goose, and somebody at some point, I haven't had this truck long, has haphazardly stuck up like a screw or something in there trying to get it hushed. But I'm getting ready to ditch this whole piece of equipment here. Look at that. I wonder if that wants some of the rattling I was hearing that I thought was something else. All right, after screwing around off camera a little bit, I finally got this top bolt out. You see, it's a whole bolt. It's a 17 on the back side and a 14 on this side. That's why when I hit it with the gun, it was loose enough to spin this guy and it won't work it. That thing come off where the stud is pretty easily. But um, if your heat shield's intact, you're gonna have to get creative and cut something out right here or something to get a wrench on uh, the back side of this bolt here. This slows down the process quite a bit because you have to get a, you can't just zip them off with the gun. Well, it's a couple days later. Uh, the heat shield became quite the adventure. So I got it out of there in pieces. There it is. It wasn't fun and it got dark on me. So I quit working on it. And then I come down with a stomach bug and a bunch of other things and then the weather got bad. So we're three or four days later. I was able to get those upper cats off. And as you can see, I had to trim that heat shield back let's see that brake stuff's in the way you can to get to the bolt on the back the the head of that bolt this one here i had to trim that off so what i'm going to do th there's nothing wrong with this heat shield it's intact we're going to leave it on there but when i get done and get everything put back together i'm just going to bend that back down but here's the fun part when you buy chinese cheap ebay catalytic converters you buy a whole set like this it doesn't really come with any instructions so that's where I come in. Now I got them laid out here on the ground and what you need to remember is, is to make sure to get the right one on the right side. What you need to pay attention to is where the O2 sensor bung is. Now pretty much you want to put the O2 sensor bung right where it was on the other side. So if you get them in the wrong spot and you see that the O2 sensor bungs pointed towards the engine, it's not where it was when you took it apart, then you know you got it in the wrong spot. So if you bolt it up and it looks like it's in the right spot, you're fine you got the right cat in the right spot. That goes for the rear cats too. Um, the O2 sensor bung will indicate if you've got the right one in the right spot. Also, the one on the driver's side is just a tad longer. 
Now this kit came with all these gaskets and bolts, which is which is nice. All right, now that you know where they all go, you've got them kind of laid out here. You're gonna have all these gaskets. I've got. Um, I'm opting to put the the primary and secondaries together on the ground before I put them on the truck. I'm gonna show you why here in just a moment. You got. You're gonna have four of these. Okay, two of them are gonna go here and there to the manifold. Then, where they go together here, you see how it's got this uh, cupped part? One's gonna go here, it's gonna sit down in here, and then you have two different sizes of these gaskets. You see how there's some of them that are smaller? You're gonna have two of the smaller ones and two of the bigger ones. The bigger ones are gonna go back there that goes to your cat back system. The smaller of the two is gonna go in between here, and you're gonna want this thing to set just like this and then this piece is going to go in that hole and everything's going to mash together that's why I'm putting the primary and secondary cats together on the ground because that joint right there that one where they're where we're going to stack both these gaskets together that was real critical that it gets seated properly else it's going to leak you can see I already got this one put together and everything smashes together nice and it looks decent when you get done with it. All right, now I'm looking at the back of the manifold. You see it also has that taper on the manifold, just like where that primary and secondary goes together. So you're gonna put those O-rings on the primary cat and make sure it seats nicely right there in that hole before you tighten it all up. Well, I got the other side tightened up and put in, but the shots I got off it were very poor because there was a drive shaft running right here for the four-wheel drive. But, we'll do this one real quick. We'll put our little O-ring on the front. Slide this bad boy in from the back. The main thing to remember. It's just, the, the main thing to remember is just to tighten this stuff up evenly and get the stud going. there we are when you go to put all these bolts on there get everybody finger tight and then you evenly go around tighten this one a little bit tighten that one a little bit tighten that one a little bit so that when it goes up it doesn't go up at an angle and that little o-ring will seat properly all right i got all the cats bolted up all the oxygen sensors hooked up you see it right there got the ones in the front too everybody all this went to, together pretty good honestly so will the chinese ebay uh kelly converters hold up over time i don't know that remains to be seen but they bolted up pretty nice now on to this monster right here um once again we have no direction so that's what you got me for so we're gonna start bolting this thing up and seeing how it goes together all right i'm installing this kept back exhaust and this is turning into an episode of whose fitment is the wackest watch this see that right there Put that on and it points straight down and there ain't no adjustment in it and then you look over here at that one and it's pointing even if you jack that muffler up and you put the hanger on it it still ain't where it needs to be this is wrong so i thought that the exhaust system's fitment was whack the Amazon unit but I got the old exhaust system out and I made a discovery so I want you to know just how on these catalytic converters how flat that's sitting you see how these bolts are sitting pretty much flat headed to the ground right they're, they're even across this way here's my old exhaust and if you look you notice how these are cocked to the side 
and the same over here. So it turns out that the WAC fitment is because of this catalytic converters. It comes from China. This is just the type of crap that you run into when you buy cheap stuff. Now, at this point, I could return this stuff and go spend a whole lot more money and go get the proper stuff, or I could just bite the bullet and make it work. I don't want to bite the bullet and make it work, but that's exactly what I'm getting ready to do. Now, if I had a welder, what I could do is grind that weld off right there, turn this pipe where I needed it, and then weld it back on so this flange will be sitting in the right spot. And then the same on the other side. What I'm going to end up having to do is I'm going to have to cut that pipe and get me a, a two and a half inch connector and a couple U-bolts so I can turn that pipe where I want it. That's the driveway way without a welder. And until I get that part sorted out, there's no way to see if this uh, exhaust system is going to line up right. So that's kind of a bummer. So let me go to the store. I'll be right back. So I went to my O'Reilly's and I picked up these two two and a half inch connectors and four clamps. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sawzall and I'm going to cut it here and I'm going to cut it here. And I'm going to install this. And then that way I'll be able to twist this to get this flange to match the back of those whack catalytic converters. That's gonna work out great. Well, you can see I got this clamp set up. It's not tight, but it's looking a lot better. That angle was, was screwing me up. Now, when you put any of this stuff together, if you have to do this crap, don't tighten up nothing until you get it all on there. I will say this for the exhaust system, I had to cut a piece out of the end of this about that much because I couldn't get that um, hanger to line up. So there's another issue. But that's the adventure with cheap exhaust parts. Moving along. Well, it happened again. I ran out of daylight. See the sun is setting again. But I got all this stuff installed. I had to do a little, some trimming here and there. We'll take a look. I don't know how well it's picking it up. Yeah, it's all right. So everything's hooked up. I still had to do some trimming here and there. Some of that's because of these clamps I installed to make the, the flanges be in the right spot. But all I have to do now is tighten up everything but I'm sure it'll be dark by the time that happens. So I'll see you tomorrow and the next clip will be tomorrow and I will be starting this thing up. sounds pretty good it's a little loud for my taste let's take a look the daylight shot fully installed I will say this I really don't like where the exhaust come out because it's real close to the bumper and I had to push the tip back in I could have come in here and trimmed it at the joint that's behind the tire there but I'm gonna be honest, it was getting cold and it was getting dark and I just finished installing it. I may go back at some point and uh, trim that piece and move it so that the 
exhaust will be more in this area here. Let's get some drive-bys and some takeoffs. See what it sounds like like that. One week later. All right, now that I've been running this exhaust system for about a week, we'll give you some interior noise, sounds, and give you my final thoughts. It's a little noisy. It was real noisy in the cab when I first installed this thing, but um, I don't know if I'm getting used to it or if the exhaust just got broke in, but um, it seems to be quieter. Give you a little full throttle shot here. will tell you it's got a lot more um, I ain't gonna say a lot it has a noticeable difference in power noticeable I don't know how much it's not like I dyno tuned it but that's probably because of all the back pressure I was getting from the catalytic converter pieces being stopped up in the muffler and that um, that Y pipe from the factory has a lot of restriction and I, we don't have that anymore pros and cons of this Amazon cat back exhaust system pros decently cheap it's um fit and finish is good the welds look good on the pipe seems quality now, i don't know how to hold up in corrosive environments but it seems pretty good and i mean it sounds decent and that was about it for pros to be honest you could probably go get the m the mbrp or mr whatever you know i'm gonna screw that up every time for about 60 70 bucks more it seems like so i mean it's a, a minimal savings for something that i paid 369 dollars from amazon for that exhaust system uh the cons are is that it has a bad drone at somewhere between 2000 and 2500 now if you go a little bit faster or a little bit slower it goes away and it sounds fine but it does have an annoying drone if you get in that sweet spot on the highway it, pretty bad the other con is that if you don't have to trim pipe then this probably ain't good for a DIY installation I mean it's not the end of the world but I thought it's slightly annoying all the pipe on it was cut long I had to take my sawzall and I had to kind of trim it to fit so it would fit properly overall I think it's fine but eventually I'm gonna VK swap it anyway and I plan on just piping that uh, the V8 right into those pipes and I think it'll work great now for the eBay catalytic converters, huh? I say uh, just save your money and get some more expensive ones because there's a difference between cheap and inexpensive, and these are cheap, not just inexpensive. All four cats were two hundred dollars. I should have known. Um, they're pretty trash. The uh, flanges, like you saw, the flanges, that was the whole problem we having to get those connectors so the flanges weren't done properly. So if you try to put those cats on with a factory exhaust, it's not going to line up. You're going to have to do the same thing with it, whether you use the cat back or not. Um, and then on top of that, I drove this thing around for a little while and uh, check engine light come on. PO420 and PO430. Catalytic converter codes. So they don't even catalytic convert nothing so I would definitely shy away now it ain't a big deal to me I got a way to make the chickens and like wink wink go out so I'm really not that concerned with it they're not leaking it's not any funky welds on them but if you're looking for emissions control it ain't there well this is gonna wrap it up everybody um if, I appreciate you watching it to the end if you made it that far I plan on doing a lot with this truck. Like I said, a VK swap. We're going to do a tight suspension swap eventually, a little over time. So if you're into Frontiers or you drive a Frontier, 
you definitely want to subscribe because there's going to be a lot getting done over time. Also, I have other projects. I got out of Armada. I got the stuff to do around the house. So check out the rest of my channel. If you're a new person, thanks for watching. Come back and see me.